This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So you've heard about the Boss Waza Airs when they came out. I think a lot of people, myself included, kind of wondered what are these things about. I think you have to really play them to understand. I bought these with my own money. My first impression was like, okay, well, these are quite expensive and it was a bit of a frustrating experience getting them set up in the first place. Over the process of a few kind of weeks and just plugging them in, sticking them on, playing guitar and getting kind of fully immersed into that experience, playing along with kind of tunes on Spotify and being able to walk around the house. Uh, this was at a time when um, Elodie had been born, I think, and so I would go downstairs and kind of just chill out for a bit and play guitar. Yeah, th th these have actually become one of my favourite pieces of gear. I would say it's the best headphone experience you can have playing guitar. That's been my experience with the Waza headphones in general. So when the Katana Go came out, I kind of thought, okay, well, I like the platform. I like the idea. What I was kind of worried about was how much of the heavy lifting are the headphones doing? Now, I still do think that the Waza Airs are the best headphone experience, but the Katana Go is a slightly different product that can do some other things that are a bit more useful to me. So, um, yeah, when Boss asked if I wanted to do a Katana Go demo, um, I said, yes, please, and can I check it out? So they sent me this, and this is a sponsored video. The, the Waza Airs I bought with my own money and kind of have talked about them for a while as well. So the Katana Go essentially is, this is like Katana Mark 1, this is like Katana Mark 2. So you have a few extra models that you wouldn't have in the Waza Air. And things like stage feel work a bit different. So this thing, as you turn your head around in certain modes, it has like a gyroscope in it, which um, kind of positions you 
uh, around like a, a pretend kind of stage or like with an ambience thing. With this, basically it puts both you and the music in a space, like in a reverb, and you can change where you are in that space. Now you can turn this on or off. Um, for the introduction, and for most of my use, I would leave it off so that I get the true benefit of the stereo thing because that's a, another big thing about the Katana Go. This is the first time that there's kind of like a proper stereo experience with Katana, except for maybe the Katana Air X. The other really cool thing about this is it's got a, an output and a USB output. So what I was doing in the intro there was that I took my um, headphone output, plugged in, and these two go to my audio interface. So this can integrate into my normal kind of workflow and I can create music with this thing, which is really cool. That was the one downside for me with the Wazas actually, that I couldn't actually integrate these into my workflow. So they were just for practice, um, which is not a bad thing in and of itself. It's just if it had that one extra feature where I could plug out of it, it I'd be onto an absolute winner. So that is one of the ways that I'd actually use this, just into the studio kind of monitors with this. I've also tried a couple of different pairs of headphones. I've got these uh, KZS10 things, which are like relatively cheap Amazon in-ear type headphones. And with those, I really did feel like the stage feel kind of transformed them. They're not the best sounding headphones, but the stage feel thing essentially kind of throws you into like uh, a, a kind of room type space and kind of helps to solve some of the harshness and dodgy sound that you can get out of these things. Other bits that I've tried, I've got some Sennheiser Mass Drop uh, like HD 650 type headphones, which are, are kind of expensive. And I didn't think they actually got quite as close to the Waza Airs as I would have liked, but those sound pretty good as well. And I've got some like AKGs, I've tried them all. Yeah, pretty decent experience. The one thing that I've done that I wouldn't do on the Waza Airs is that in an EQ block, I'm using a bit of a high cut to just move things back, uh, kind of lose some of that direct kind of feel that you get, you know, when, when playing with a modeler. So uh, in the EQ block, which there's a bunch of, which is really useful, I take that EQ and take the high cut down for the high gain tones just so it's kind of less harsh and that's something I would do in basically any modeler anyway. Um, but I would say that this for me is about the best kind of plug-in headphone amp experience that I've had. Typically you find that there'll be like compromises with them where you know there might not be an EQ or there might be like a, a few EQ choices or something like that or there'll be like little frustrating things that are missing because this is essentially a full Katana Mark II built in here um, plus the added kind of stereo-ness um, there's some real use in it. The other cool thing about it there's this sessions thing which I've not been able to get into but you can load in basically songs that you're playing and program in changes so it, it can change as you go, which I think is a pretty handy little feature if you can get your head around that. Um, and it could mean kind of hands-free patch changing and stuff like that. Now, that's not exactly how I would actually play live. So for me, using something like this might get closer to the kind of practice experience, the Boss FS1 wireless. There's also an expression pedal that you can join up to it but I think they've really killed it so that's kind of a, an overview of the Katana Go Alec if you're watching this sorry I won't go as in-depth as you're gonna be looking for um, but you already have both of these so you know what you're looking for so shout out to Alec who runs the Katana kind of groups on Facebook and the Waza Air groups and you should go check those both out the Katana Go users group the Waza Air users group if you're wanting to to get into some of the capabilities of these units that it's not really possible for me to look into right now at this moment. I've done another video connecting uh, this up with your phone. If you've got an Android phone and wanted to see how that is done, um, because that was a thing that is not super obvious from the manual, but I think if you follow it, you can get there. And that is one thing I saw people asking about on forum. Um, so I thought let's do that to start off with, but I've got kind of like three presets that I've put together quickly. So these were kind of based on my Waza Air 
presets. So first of all, it's kind of like a lead tone. Now, there's a question maybe like whether you should use stage feel or not. For me, that's mode one, mode two, mode three, and then off. What you probably notice is that when you have it off, you've got some kind of stereo delay effects going on there. So that for me, when I'm recording, stage feel would be off if I was gonna be recording with this. So that's my kind of lead preset. Um, I'm using the lead amp, and then in terms of effects, got a clean boost on, I think a compressor on, a pan delay, reverb, and then importantly, got an EQ section down here. Um, compared to the Waza Airs, I'm finding that I'm wanting to use quite an aggressive high cut, um, which is what that stage feel would effectively do, because with Waza's, I found that normally I have like the amp sounding like it's behind me. Now, um, JC lead more is kind of just a bit extra, a bit more gain on top of that. Then uh, clean chorus was essentially using the clean amp. And some of the beautiful chorus effects. So we're using the Dimension DC30 there. Uh, we got the pan delay, uh, an analog delay, I think, and the plate reverb, just really tasty. What I also wanted to do was maybe just dial in some something new. Uh, so we'll start off with the clean amp. Okay. Um, and then effects wise, well, maybe let's start off with the crunch amp actually. Let's just start off with everything at 50. Let's go into our delay types and stereo. What's that good? Just to the right. Tape echo then. Or shall we go with and I'm going to turn off the noise suppressor. And change this to natural OD. That could be like JC Edge. It's no longer modern brown. JC Edge. Kind of an edge of breakup type thing. What I like about this versus almost any other um, headphone style amp is that we've got so much choice.
and also Quite a lot of the um, stock presets actually sound pretty good. We got a bunch of really weird effects in here as well if you're looking for kind of outrageous stuff. So like the slow gear. Um, what else have we got? Wave synth. Very useful stuff. Uh, octave. And it's actually got that clever thing. Gonna hear that's not doing it across the entire um, range. So by that G there. That's actually incredibly useful. Um, uh, as I say, there's like loads of really, really useful stuff in here, and lots of EQ options, which really does mean that with these amps, you can actually uh, get in there and and make the changes that you need to. Um, because yeah, what I find is that having these two EQ slots here really does mean that you can get in there and be a little bit more specific about the tones that you're trying to dial in than you can with most other headphone amps. In terms of other stuff going on, there's this session here which I've not really figured out how to use, but there's going to be other videos on that. But essentially, you can even program preset changes to like a song that you load in here, which is kind of crazy. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do this without problems, but you can basically load in whatever song you're practicing. Uh, so there's loads in here. Um, get the idea, and then you could, if you're this way inclined, um, just program in preset changes along with that, or YouTube videos and that sort of thing, as well as tone exchange. Um, you can actually download loads of other presets that other people have made and the full feature set will be available in June 2024 but you can share presets now um, so I think they've really got quite a lot of stuff involved here and the fact that you can actually record with it means that this is the sort of thing that I could literally take out and then use and this could be all that I took for a th Really, really clever stuff. Um, and yeah, I've done a video on how to connect it up if you want to check that out. And go check out the Midi Mad Scientist Club um, leader, Alec Bourne, has done loads of great stuff and kind of curates a bunch of stuff in the groups around katanas, all of them, but particularly the Katana Go and the Katana Airs and the Waza Airs. He's been really interested in those for a long time. Videos. So yeah. 
cheers to Alec and uh, Katana Go. So once I dialed in my Waza tones, for example, I've not really gone into the app much at all. I just play guitar when I've got them, and that is, I, I think, a sign that they're getting things really quite right with these things, that I'm not going in and tweaking with the app. I'm just wanting to play guitar. So for me, that's a winner. Um, yeah, what I'd like to see Boss do is combine these two things, and then you'd have your kind of perfect super villain <laughs> because I'd have my favorite headphone experience but with the headphone out so that I could actually integrate these into my workflow and that would be ideal for me personally so boss if you're if you're watching um I'd love to 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 get a, a mark two of the Waza Airs I guess um I know there's people that have modded these things to to have a headphone output as well and there is even a jack there waiting for something so um I think that'd be a really cool thing. But yeah, they really chucked a lot into this. A really powerful little unit. Kind of crazy that you can fit all of what a katana can do and more because this has 30 presets built in, um, which you can just switch from them and then go up and down through the banks. 30 presets in that tiny thing, as well as it being like as capable as a katana. 32-bit processing, it's kind of wild to think what you can fit into something that size these days.